So, hello and welcome back to War Thunder. Today we take a look at the Martin Baker MB5, the pinnacle of piston engine fighters on the British side. The MB5 now, this is really an amazing aircraft. This might be one of the biggest what if aircraft of World War II. And today I'm going to tell you all about it. Showing you how to play this thing in War Thunder. And also telling you a little bit about the history of this thing. So let's start with that right away. Now, the Martin Baker Company was founded by James Martin and Val Baker in 1934. James Martin was an Irish immigrant um, who had previously flopped with his first uh, company, the Martin's Aircraft Works, in 1929 after running out of funds before he could even build his first aircraft. During that time, however, he became friends with Captain Valentine Baker and the sponsor Francis Francis, top tier name giving by the way, <laughs> and founded the Martin Baker Company. Their first aircraft, the MB-1, was a light aircraft, and their second, the MB-2, was intended to be an overseas tropical fighter that didn't get, uh, get much attention, however. This all changed when um, the MB-3 came around. This was a much more impressive fighter and called for an ex experimental high-performance aircraft with exceptionally heavy armament of six 20mm Hispano cannons. This is really unprecedented for a time. Uh, remember that most other aircraft uh, on the British side were at that time armed with like 8 or 12 light machine guns. Um, the resulting aircraft was powered by a liquid-cooled Napier Sabre engine, which is the engine that was fam would famously power the Typhoon and Tempest. Um, yeah, and the MB3 was built from steel tubes, making up the frame, uh, with large access panels for easy maintenance, which would become something of a standard for the experimental fighters uh, for Martin Baker. <coughs> During testing of the MB3, it was revealed to be very fast and maneuverable, with, exceptional, with of course, the exceptional heavy armament and uh, good uh, maintainability. Unfortunately, during its last test flight, uh, the Sabre engine just gave out, and Baker, who tried to, um, who flew the machine, performed a crash landing where the aircraft, after colliding with a tree stump, exploded, killing Val Baker on impact. Now, James Martin had to watch everything from the ground and was horrified to lose his best friend, and made it upon himself to make the follow on aircraft as perfect as possible. The next design, the MB4, was shelved entirely, and Martin completely re redesigned um, the MB3 and turned it, turned it into the MB5, which we see here. Now, the MB5 started out its days as um, the second MB3 build, which was first designated MB3A. But James Martin decided to completely start, uh, to completely overwork the aircraft. The most striking feature which was changed was of course the engine, where the MB3 was powered by the Napier Sabre, um, for the MB5 it was changed to the 27 liter Rolls Royce Griffin, specifically the Griffin 83 producing some 2340 horsepower max. Um, the basic design principles of the MB3 however were kept, uh, giving the MB5 the same tubular uh, framework and large access panels which you can clearly see here in the game as well. Um, contra-rotating, the power was uh, given to two contra-rotating propellers to somewhat mitigate the massive torque of the engine and the wide track to make it easy to start and land. Remember, for example, like aircraft the, like the uh, ME109 or the Spitfire, they would encounter problems with um, high engine torque, uh, and which made them particularly difficult to take off with. The MB-5, with its control rotating propellers and wide track, did not have these problems. Um, the new cockpit, uh, the aircraft received now a bubble canopy, reminiscent of the P-51 Mustang. This allowed for excellent vi uh, visibility uh, all around. The wings were, uh, like in the MB-3, rather short, and instead of six 20mm cannons, they now housed only four 20mm Hispano Mark IIs which also were, as you can see, easily accessible, and this provided the fighter with plenty of firepower. Now, um, the death of uh, Val Baker and Martin's, uh, James Martin's perfectionism resulted in the company completely missing its deadlines, 
The first MB5 was expected to be delivered in January of 1943, but the MB5 first took to the sky in May 1944, and that to rather disappointing results. The test pilot reported terrible lateral stability of the aircraft. Martin uh, then decided to enlarge uh, the rudder, because uh, when the MB5 was built it still had that weird, um, almost triangular shaped rudder that ma uh, most of the M uh, Martin Baker aircraft had, and this was completely uh, inefficient. Um, now ready for display, the MB5 was fl flown in front of a group that included Premier Minister Winston Churchill, during which the Griffin engine unfortunately gave out again, and another emergency, emergency landing had to be performed, this time however fortunately not killing the pilot and not destroying the aircraft. <coughs> the aircraft was then yet again tweaked over a long period, in fact so long, that the war had already ended before the MB5 was ready to give a full demonstration of its capabilities. This then finally happened in 1946 when it was handed over to the Aeroplane and Almond Experimental Establishment, which absolutely praised the aircraft in the highest notes. The MB5 was seriously fast, um, with a top speed of 740 km per hour at optimal altitude and 636 on the deck. The aircraft was found to be agile, extremely good in a dive, and comparatively quick in a climb with a maximum of 20 meters per second. They also praised the quick access, uh, accessibility to all the important parts of the aircraft and the cockpit layout, which apparently was really good. Visibility, of course, was also found to be superb. In 1946, Polis, uh, the Polish test pilot Janusz Surakowski made a demonstration flight over the Farnborough Air Show, which must have been absolutely breathtaking according to witnesses. He also praised the aircraft in the highest notes, an opinion mirrored by Eric Winkle Brown, the most experienced test pilot of all time. Unfortunately, all the time tweaking and perfecting the aircraft has had caused severe delays, so much so that the MB5 found itself to be superseded by jet aircraft like the um, Gloucester Meteor or the Havilland Vampire, and was no longer needed. The era of the prop uh, driven fighter being clearly over. A lack of facilities to produce the aircraft certainly contributed to the MB5 not being adopted for mass production. In general, the Martin Baker fighters, even the MB3, it was clear, pretty clear from the start that the aircraft would not enter production. But James Martin, as of course as a, as a perfectionist aircraft designer, he wanted to show the world what he could build. Um, Another reason might be that the aircraft, as far as I could gather, did not have any access points for secondary ammunition like bombs, so this was to be a pure fighter, um, which might have limited its uh, usefulness, at least in the eyes of the British Air Ministry. Uh, I have no doubt that this could have certainly been developed, but uh, it, this would have likely caused even more delays. The sole prototype of the MB5 survived until 1963 when its remnants were scrapped, bringing an end to this absolute beauty. Now, the Martin Baker Company, despite all um, the difficulty difficulties it faced in its early days, would become um, famous for another aeronautical product, and that's its um, ejection seats. Martin Baker today is still around and is the most important um, supplier for ejection seats. Their seats have um, saved thousands of pilots' lives throughout the years, and it's likely that Martin Baker, as a company, will stay around for a pretty long time ahead. But that's it for the Martin Baker MB5, at least for the history part. Not that much today, but this is again an experimental aircraft. It did not see service, sadly, because just to look at it, it really is a particularly good looking fighter. It looks like a little bit like a cross between a Mustang and a Spitfire, although I think it Certainly it's better than a Mustang. I'm not that big of a fan of the Mustang, I have to say, I have to say, but this one here, god, this is beautiful. It kind of reminds me a little bit of the um, Australian fighter, the CA-15 Kangaroo. Can't wait for that thing to, uh, to enter the game as well, because these two, the CA-15 and the MB-5, they will be, they will be probably be, um, rather evenly matched, to be honest. They were some of the most powerful um, last generation of piston fighters to be around, both not seeing service, both not being adopted for mass production, but absolutely stunning performers nonetheless. 
Now, as for the MB5 here in game, um, the MB5 is a premium vehicle. Um, sitting at rank 4, it costs 3850 golden eagles. It was originally a pack vehicle, but has since been turned into a regular premium to uh, just purchase with uh, golden eagles. Um, it sits at a battle rating of 5.0, which is a pretty good battle rating for an aircraft of its performance. When looking at the stat card, you can see that this is a very, very fast aircraft with a good climb rate and heavy armament. It's also cheap as chips to run with only 3,900 max repair costs. The rewards are also not that bad. So if you are looking for uh, a mid-tier prop plane to grind out the British tree with, this is one of your best options. It really is one hell of an aircraft. Not to mention, it's easy on the eyes as well. I mean, this is just a beautiful machine. So yeah, then let's talk a little bit about the modifications. Since it's a premium aircraft, there is nothing to research. But um, as for belts, I would go for the air target belt or the stealth belt if you don't want to have any tracers. Um, there is no secondary armament for this aircraft, so this is a pure thoroughbred fighter. And well, that's anything Everything I think uh, to say about the MB5, at least to its attributes here in game. Let's show you how this thing performs in the air. Well then, let's talk about the MB5's performance here in a test flight. Now let me show you what this thing is all about. Now, the MB5 um, can best be described as a British FW190 in terms of its playstyle. It's a very, very good boom and zoomer and comes with all the advantages and disadvantages that such a playstyle um, such a playstyle has. Now, let's talk with the bad things about the MB5. So there are well, a few things. Now, one bad thing is that the MB5's acceleration is not that impressive. Um, despite a 2340 horsepower engine, the aircraft is comparatively heavy. Fully loaded weighs 5.5 tons. Compare this, for example, to the 3.3 .3 tons fully loaded to the BF of a BF 9K4. The MB5 is a heavy bird. That's why the acceleration, particularly at low speed, is not the best. Also, um, because the aircraft is heavy and has such rather short wings, the wing loading is particularly high. It has a 224 kilograms per square meter wing loading, which means that especially at low speed, um, the aircraft does not turn well. In fact, it does not turn well at all speeds, uh, except at very high ones between 600 and 650 kilometers per hour. This will be the optimum, uh, the optimal speed to really turn with the MB5, although as Boom and Zoomer, turn fighting should be kept at a minimum. The guns are the Hispano Mark IIs, which tend to... S I don't know, these are, these are weird guns. I mean, sometimes they clap really hard, but then again, it takes forever to down an enemy aircraft, so I don't know what's wrong with that. Um, however, the guns are mounted comparatively uh, at, the ed at the outer edges of the wing. This can be tricky because you need to set convergence for the guns. Um, it is good for deflection shooting if you really have the full uh, profile view of an enemy aircraft. Then these guns can be really good. However, if it really is a mixed bag. It depends on the playstyle. I would recommend uh, turning on vertical targeting for these guns. They are um, they have very high amount of velocity, so you can snipe with them. That's why I would set convergence as far out as possible. I have it set to like 700 meters. But that really is everything bad about the NB5. Now we come to the, the good stuff. It's tremendously fast. You can easily... Uh, you can... I mean, the dive, it's, it's phenomenal anyways. But even on deck, this thing uh, goes easily over 600 kilometers per hour. And that is impressive for a 5.0 aircraft. The climb rate is also not too shabby. It can keep up, however, because of the comparatively bad acceleration, you will initially lag behind your team a little bit. However, where this aircraft absolutely shines is its roll performance. That is certainly not bad, but most impressively, 
is if, is if it are its dive capabilities. This is one of the best diving aircraft in the game, at least when it comes to propeller fighters. This thing will reach over 900 km per hour in the dive, and it will remain controllable throughout that uh, speed range. Just look at that. No problem pull, pulling out of that. That is seriously impressive. To say it with the words of uh, Jeremy Clarkson, speed and power, this is what this aircraft is all about. Not only is the MB-5 really good in the dive, it can also hold the speed and pull out particularly well. This is one of those aircraft um, that once it goes over its specified, over its top speed, uh, and it will slow down after that in the dive, but it, in this one, it doesn't slow down that quickly. This thing really loves to go fast. And that's why this is one of the best boom and zoomers in the game. You can you can go in the dive, shoot at your enemy, then quickly either zoom away or convert that uh, build up speed back into altitude. It really depends on the situation. However, if you know how to play the MB5 correctly, this thing is virtually untouchable. And that's why the MB5 at 5.0 is one of the best fighter aircraft at that BR. And I seriously don't know why so few people seem to buy this thing and uh, take it out. I mean, it, I guess it costs real money and it's not that cheap. But still, you see lots of people flying out uh, the Westland Viron. Um, and that thing is uh, also powerful aircraft and uh, a lot of people fly this thing around. This one, the MB5, not that much. I kind of guess because it does not have the option to um, mount secondary armaments, but still, as fighters go, this this really is exceptional. I I'm having tremendous fun with this aircraft in ARB. It's it really is a particularly fun aircraft to fly. Um, it does not prepare us um, new players maybe for the British line all too much. Because particularly at mid-tier, you, you will have lots of um, turn fighters like the Hurricanes, the Spitfires, and the MB-5 certainly isn't a turn fighter. This plays more like an American or a German um, aircraft, if you go for the FW-190 line, FW line, line at least. Speaking of, of FW-90s, this is one of the best aircraft um, with which you can hunt FW-90s, because they can't do anything against you. The MB-5 is faster. Um, it can roll with them, but uh, particularly they, they also cannot outturn it. The MB5 might not be that maneuverable, but it certainly is maneuverable enough to dogfight with an FW190, both in the vertical and the horizontal. Um, there are, however, aircraft you need to be careful around. Particularly in up tiers, you will face a lot of lots of Corsairs, and Corsairs they can catch you even down on the deck sometimes in the right circumstances. Particularly the late Corsairs, the F2G, the F4U4, the F4U7. Keep an eye out for them since they can also outturn you. Also of note is the A7M. The A7M is uh, more is, mu is faster than a Zero, and way more maneuverable than you. Uh, it also climbs pretty good, decently. Um, so if an A7F is making is making an attack on you, try to dive away. Or what's also what also can be helpful, uh, go as fast as possible and then engage because the A7 has terrible high speed uh, performance, and you might be able to fly some fancy maneuver and uh, turn the tables on them. FW190s. Uh, should not be a problem for this aircraft, as I uh, we told earlier. B uh, BF109s are more dangerous to this thing since um, it cannot outturn a BF109. But sh keep in mind that the aircraft is really built for its speed um, and make use of that and its exceptional dive performance. Following these guidelines, uh, will result in the aircraft being a real pleasure to, to fly and it will be like a gift that keeps on giving. Thanks to its premium status and decent um, modifiers, this thing is a very good money maker. I mean, I, I have, I've had some absolute monsters over games 
with, the, with this aircraft. And it really prepares yourself well for the late, uh, for the later high tier prop uh, gameplay, since a lot of these fighters at high, uh, at the high echelon of the prop driven fighters will focus speed over maneuverability, and the MB5 follows those lines particularly well. So, um, that's for the aircraft in-game. Ah, one thing you might have noticed also is that the aircraft tends to overheat comparatively quickly. Keep that in mind. Um, it cools down uh, pretty f pretty fast once you uh, um, reduce power. Uh, but still, it certainly is of note. Despite the high wing loading, um, the MB5 is actually pretty easy to land. Uh, landing speed, you should land, can land this thing around at around 170 km per hour without problems. It does have flaps, however, uh, only they can only be set in the uh, landing configuration, so no combat flaps, sadly. But as you can see, it certainly remains stable even at low speed, and it is rather easy to land. Flap set to landing, they deploy comparatively quickly. And 170, 160, easy peasy. So this should not be a problem. So, that's for the aircraft in game. Now let's see what this aircraft can, can do in a match. So, this is my very first match in the MB5. Quick look around the cockpit. Yeah, that's probably what they're what, what they all about with that more innovative uh, cockpit layout. But anyways, um, this is my very first match with the MB5. I just got this thing and I can't wait to see how this thing performs. I mean, I am, am expecting great things from this aircraft. It should be pretty damn good. Okay, no combat flaps, which is already a little bit of a disappointment. Okay, F-82 coming in. Roll rate seems pretty good, like in the real aircraft. So, let's see, let's see, let's see. Another F-82 down there. Right. I'm just waiting here for the perfect opportunity to really engage. Yeah. Let's enter that fur ball. I mean with 224 kilogram per square wing loading, this thing should not be that maneuverable, so I will use it as a boom and zoomer. Oh uh, not the best approach, okay. Yep. Quickly roll around. And let's have another go. Oh, that F-82 is looking... Oh, he's pretty slow. Yeah, I should get him. And kaboom! That's kill number one. First blood for my MB-5. Oh, holy yeah. Pah, I'm just zooming away like nothing. <laughs> Eat my dust. Alright. The F-82 coming in, being followed by, holy shit, that's a lot of enemy aircraft. Could need some help here. Okay, let's see if I can get the F-82 maybe. He's probably gonna go ahead on, yeah, long range engagement, get some shots off and then, yeah, evade, 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 evade. Oh, got him, critical. And that's one thing you can do with uh, those Hispanos. They have a uh, very high muzzle velocity. You can use them uh, to snipe. Uh, I mean, I'm not a fan of head-ons, but in this case, you know, just fire some shots at very long range and then you wait before the enemy has the chance to fire at you. Is certainly a viable tactic with uh, any aircraft that has uh, these Hispanos equipped. So, I'm being followed by the A7M. I am way faster than him. I have way more engine power. So, I should easily be able to just fly a long circle around to re engage. 
without him being able to fire at me. Yep. Alright, it seems my team has cleaned up down there pretty good. Oh, another, another F-82 spotted. Oh wait, is that... No, it's not. That guy's still following me. What the fuck? I mean, buddy, you ain't gonna catch me. Ah, there comes the cavalry. Okay, now what? There, yeah, now that he's distracted. Yeah. Let's help my teammate out here. And return the favor. Oh, now we got a pure Muska coming in as well. Oh, the FE2 just went down. Good. And, yep. Yeah. Pure Mask just got the kill on the A7M. Alright. That F82 is the only enemy aircraft spotted right now. But there are some others left. They are fighters. Where are they? Hmm. That the Echo 3 might be in trouble there. There's a key 84 spotted. Oh, <laughs> that 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 Yak free will be in a lot of trouble. And that key 84 enters the fray as well. Ah, oh, all right, he's down there. Good. Good. This is now the perfect situation for a boom and zoomer. Should be able to attack them with impunity. Come on, let's make a dive on the K-84, I'm overheating. Oh, I think he hasn't spotted me. Come on, come on, yes, he's dead. That's our second kill, holy shit, that thing is fast. Alright. Loop around. Okay, F-82, and they're just coming in from the airfield, like, like... <laughs> just look at that, just look at that stream of bullets from that F-82. <laughs> that is one ridiculous aircraft. Oh, yep, not engaging head-on, got another hit on him. Ha, <laughs> now I can just loop around and get on his tail. I have the energy advantage here. And this thing is seriously good in the dive, so I should be able to get him. I mean, the F-82 is no slouch, but I man, this thing has a has tremendous dive capability. I mean, holy shit! And there's my third kill. And convert that speed into altitude. I have to admit, yeah, this thing is actually doesn't seem to be too bad in hammerhead maneuvers as well. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Get that one as well. Come on, yes! <laughs> That's four kills. Hey, not bad. Can I make it five? Come on, there, mu there must be one guy left as well. Yeah, there, there, there certainly must be another one. Oh, come on. That would be a great combat debut with the MB5. Just an ace. Holy hell. God, this is one hell of an aircraft. I love it. Seriously, why is... I mean, I see the MB5 so rarely in these guys. Why is no one flying this thing? I mean, this is... See, this is... This is a 5 0 super prop, basically. Holy shit, I mean, this... this hell, this is fun. Really. Okay, last guy spotted. Let's see if I can get him. 
Come on, I want that ace. And I'm not top of the leaderboard. Mm, I don't like that. Oh, there's the... Yeah, coming in. He wants to have a go at A26 as well. Oh, let's see, let's see. We're closing in fast. Of oh, that roll rate, I mean, yeah. MB5 was known f It did have a pretty good roll rate historically, so... Kind of expected. This really feels like a British uh, FW190. Come on, come on, don't come sit behind his tail. So I'm gonna engage from above. Then need to overtake him first. To be an optimal attack angle. Oh, yeah, Kree is playing a game, dangerous game here. And he got, oh, he got him, he got him. Good for him. And that's match. Four kills for me. Certainly won't complain about that. And those are some neat results. Not a bad first match. That was really great. So, and here in the next match with the MB5, we are already at altitude. And that P47 down there is looking pretty juicy. There's nothing else to engage with now, so I might as well go for it. Oh my god, he is uh, engaged uh, in a dark fight already with that uh, A7M. And just just look how quickly this thing builds up speed in the dive. That, that really is just just absurd. <laughs> I mean, P47 is very, is basically a very, very good boom and zoomer, but against the MB5, even it won't stand a chance. Boom! And there's our first kill, and we're pulling out of that dive, going over 800 kilometers per hour. Easy peasy. Unfortunately, now, yeah, I'm not in the best position. The rest of the enemy team is above it, uh, above me, and I need to be careful not to be engaged right now because I am in the process of regaining some altitude to convert it back into speed later. So we are gonna distance ourselves from the main fighting area at the moment. We're just gonna wait uh, and see how this battle unfolds a little bit before we gonna we are gonna re-engage. Okay, there's another P47. Let me two six four. All right, all right, all right. Okay. Yep, I think it's safe to re-engage. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh. I guess no guts, no glory. Let's head in! <laughs> Bunch of P-47s up high. Might be able to get one of those. They seem to be distracted. And uh, now they are sure aren't anymore. They just killed that guy. Fuck. Alright. Yeah, I think we should go for the P-47s. Check out six, we're good to go. And let's get that P47. Yeah, yep, that guy just broke off. Good. And we should easily be able to catch this guy here. Uh, let's try and loop around. Yep, got him critical. And ah, almost. Okay, plenty of ammo to go. Come on, come on. Hit. Oh, good, go good god, how many hits does this guy take? Finally. Holy shit, I just wasted a ton of ammo. Oh, another P47? Can we get him? Long range engagement and. Yes! Ah, uh, couldn't save my teammate there, unfortunately. But we avenged him. That's three kills so far. I counted that correctly. 
Alright, 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 alright. Oh. Okay, now we have a course here. Yep, okay. Let's engage some evasive maneuvers. Try to conserve as much energy as possible, so no full turn. Just a roll to evade him. Yeah, he's gonna pull out of that uh, much faster. He does it. Oh, okay, what's he doing? Well, that will cost you dearly, my friend. <laughs> Got him with my last ammo. Holy crap. I mean, what was he thinking? He should have just. Uh, uh, should have just gone uh, straight ahead or pulled up in a climb. I wouldn't have been able to follow since he had way more energy uh, than me. But he chose to turn, and well, pff, don't mind if I uh, take advantage of that. So that's four kills. Not bad at all. Okay, we have B from the line following us. I do need some cover. I need to return to base to rearm. Come on! Oh, he's closing in. He does have the altitude advantage, but I should be able to outrun him. Yep. Come on, just a little bit in the dive and just look at how this thing builds up speed. I'm over 600 kilometers per hour right now. Yeah, buddy, you ain't gonna catch me. Gunning the engine, but I... I, I yep, yep, he's, he's... He's losing distance. And I'm safe. Perfect. And we're coming here in for a quick landing. Textbook landing here. Slow down. Rearm. But I doubt we're gonna get that guy. I mean... Yeah. The match is almost over anyways. <laughs> and... E109 died. That's match. We've won. And our four kill match. Certainly won't complain about that. So we're in here for our final presentation with the Martin Baker MB5. We are uh, on the winter map here against the Germans and the Russians. So this will be an interesting match, certainly. I think we are top tier, if I'm not mistaken. There's our, our is it U2? FW190 is probably D series. Alright, yeah, I think we are at around 5 OBR. So we're right at home. And there is 190. I don't know. If well, let's see. I don't think he's paying attention, so this, this might be our first kill. Ah, oh, he's coming in perfectly. Yep! <laughs> there he goes. <laughs> Poor guy probably didn't even know what hit him. <laughs> That's our first kill, and there's another FW90. Let's see. Oh, he seems to be more awake than the last guy. Okay. He is probably going in for a head on. Oh, is he? Yep, yeah, yeah, yes, yes. Let, let's evade, let's evade. Not gonna go head on with an FW90. Okay, oh interesting, he's not he's not trying to pursue me. Okay, we're clear to engage. Let's follow him. Well that, that this is what I told you earlier. The FW nineties they can't do can't do much against an MB5. I'm easily keeping up with him. There's the crit. Come on, flaps out. A little bit of rudder. Yes. Perfect. Oh, and he's trying to dive away from me, which would work with most against most aircraft when you're flying an FW-190, but not when an MB-5 is following you. And I will eventually gonna catch him here. But it seems, I think he's damaged enough, so I think he can, yep, he is. 
That's kill number two. Let's concentrate on the Yak-3. Easy approach here. Did I completely mess up? That's embarrassing. But we immediately will take it into the vertical. Our Yak-3 is... The, the Yak fighters are not that good in the vertical anyways. And I, I can just toy with him now. I'm, I'm easily uh, able to just uh, loop around and get on his tail. Come on. Make use of that roll rate, and yep, that's a great third kill, and I think that was flak. God damn it. <laughs> oh, it's not too, too bad. I guess our wingtip got hit. We're still good to go. Let's see. Oh, another FW190. Get followed by a P51. Let's see, let's see. Maybe we can get here, uh, get a quick fourth kill here as well. Full water emergency power, you can see how fast this thing is going on the deck. Oh, is he damaged? I don't know, he's, he seems rather slow. And he's, he is getting engaged by that Mustang. I mean, if, it, if it doesn't set, set him on fire, and I can go in and take the kill. If he sets him on fire, then I will, of course, uh, leave it for him. And I've got hit again by flag, god damn it. No, he's not on fire, come on, Ooh, this was risky. Yep, <laughs> there's my fourth kill. Oh, that was fucking great. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, it was a risky shot. I almost hit the Mustang. I, uh, but it did work out in the end, so. Yeah. And, oh god, oh god. Wait. Oh my god, yeah, I, I'm way too close to the enemy airfield. Shit. Okay, um. Got a leak in both the my oil and the water. Oh, let's go for some quick ground targets while we are heading back to base. Oh, god damn it. Uh, good thing the engine did not get hit, at least. So I should be able to make. Ooh, that's quite a long way. Well, let's gun the engine. Oh, great, we won. Fuck yeah. Good job, good job, team. And I think we are on top on the leaderboard. With four kills to our credit. Yep. Yep. Top of the leaderboard with the MB5. That's what I want to see. And there we go. <laughs> that was certainly not a bad game. And remember, these... Uh, Rewards are with a non-premium account. So yeah, the MB5 is actually a pretty good money maker. So that's it for the Martin Baker MB5. I hope you thoroughly enjoyed this guide and might have even learned something from it. This certainly is one hell of a performer. I seriously can't understand why so few people fly this thing. Um, really is a stellar performer, I can highly recommend it. Those were 3,850 gold eagles, well, spe well spent, I can tell you that. Um, but yeah, great aircraft, um, can recommend it. But that's it for today, and I hope to see you in the next one.